Hello everyone. So wanted to do a quick introductory video to AWS Lambda and I thought a really good way to kind of do this is to actually use the AWS Lambda Council to show you actually how it works and kind of get you familiar with AWS Lambda Council. I think that's uh, one of the best ways to actually learn this just by, by actually clicking around. So let's go to services and then you can type in uh, Lambda to search for it and then you could uh, pull up Lambda here. So I have a blank slate here I cleared out for the sake of this tutorial. And um, there's create function here. If you're on the basically um, the blank slate page here, uh, you can also kind of pull up the menu and on the dashboard, there's a create function button here too. You can also click on the functions list view and then there's a create function here too. Now, they're probably gonna update the interface at some point, so it might not be the same exact interface, but I mean, idea is you're going to find the create function button, okay? And then uh, there's a couple options here. Um, we're not gonna do blueprints because there's no blueprints for Ruby yet and we're gonna create a Ruby Lambda function for this video. So we're just an author from scratch and it's actually pretty no big deal right here. So you go uh, name, hello, then the runtime, that's important, Ruby 2.5. And you see there's a couple of runtimes available here, but we're gonna choose 2.5. Existing row, we don't have one yet. So we're just gonna go create new row. If you have existing row, you can use it. And then we're gonna call it hello uh, role. And then uh, for policy template, I guess we'll just go Amazon S3 read only. And then we create function. While this function is being created, I'm gonna explain what IMA roles are, right? Because we just kind of, went through that real quickly. Uh, so the function name, explanatory, runtime, pretty uh, self-explanatory. A role name, that's the IMA role. So what's an IMA role? A IAM role, IAM, is how you um, how AWS handles permissions to AWS resources. So when you create a Lambda function, you can associate IMA role with it, and the IMA role contains permissions. These permissions will allow that Lambda function to do things to AWS resources, like read only from S3 or write into S3, and, and, and such okay so if you actually go to IMA council I have one right here and I'm gonna click refresh because I just loaded it and now it just it, it created that whole little role, role for us so that's where the role is right there uh, but that's what basically wizard kind of did it created the role thing associated with the lambda function so then uh, that lambda function can have different IMA access okay so uh, now we are now successfully in the create kind of function show view I guess and you can see uh, under the configuration here the designer so there's a lot of different sections here. The main section we're gonna focus is on function code, but I'm gonna kinda of go through a couple of these sections with you just so you know you know what it's about. So designer, this is where you kind of hook up like um, events and or what's or call triggers to your Lambda function. So Lambda function, there are multiple ways to call the Lambda function. You could call it by actually just hitting this test button up here that's just manually invoking it. You call it through the API, which we'll do that in the council a little bit later. You can also uh, basically register these events to the Lambda function and then trigger the Lambda function by these events. And there's all sorts of events here. Like look, look at this list, there's a long list. Uh, and then you could basically design it from here and then uh, then have the triggers kind of call the Lambda function. So an example triggers API Gateway. API Gateway, you could send RESTful uh, HTTP calls to API Gateway and then API Gateway in turn can invoke the Lambda function. So that's kind of how that works. <clears throat> you could also, let's say use uh, CloudWatch event rules so you can like CloudWatch event rules has like um, a trigger or a periodic, it's pretty much a scheduler and you, you could set that up. So then it calls um, the Lambda function periodically and then it's gonna send the event rule payload. And those payloads, they all look different, <laughs> uh, but it, they're all within basically kind of like a hash structure. And there's actually documentation that shows you sample events. Here's uh, the documentation right here, sample events published by event source. So you can see that what the kind of payloads kind of look like. I usually just log out the payload so I can really kind of get a sense of how the payload looks like. So that's what this kind of designer view interface kind of is all about. You can also like specify layers, I guess, here too. But again, I think the main focus we're gonna do is focus on the code once we cover a couple of these other areas. Okay, so here you can specify environmental variables. So down here, you can specify like environmental variables that are available with for the Lambda process. You can tag the Lambda function here. Here's the also where you could kind of uh, change the execution role, the IMA role, essentially. That's what the wizard kind of did in the previous step. There's some basic settings over here, like the description line of function, also memory. You could kind of use this to drag and create, uh, allocate all to three gigabytes of memory for the Lambda function. There's a timeout. And so you basically, if the Lambda function doesn't run within that time, it's gonna timeout. There's network, so you could basically set, uh, specify VPC. There's dead letter queue. So that's like, let's say the Lambda function errors, then you can actually uh, log the error messages to queue or send it to SNS alert. So you can, those are kind of the two current options right there. Concurrency, you could reserve concurrency. Your account has a, li a default limit of a thousand, but you can always uh, increase that soft limit. 
uh, there's audit compliance for CloudWatch. Okay, so there's a bunch of options here, right? Uh, most of the, I think the options I kind of use most is like the memory and timeout execution role and then the code itself. Okay, so now we're gonna focus in on the main part, the, the code itself. So this code, the important thing is there's this Lambda handler right here. Um, there's this first part before the period is actually the file name. So Lambda underscore function. So you have this corresponds to the file name over here. When you click that, it's actually this file. And then this, the second part of this is the handler or the method that's going to be called within that file. So here's the method. So they've already given us pretty much essentially a, a hello world program here. We just have kind of, kind of go put hello world, hello world. Uh, the default is a four, but they should really have it as two for Ruby. Um, so, okay, there's hello world. And then what we could do is actually we could uh, print out, let's say the event, event. Now that's what it's gonna log out. Puts gets logged out to CloudWatch and then you're gonna see the log out here soon. Um, and then um, status code, um, uh, or I guess this is just the payload that's being returned. So this is example payload. So it's essentially hello world. So we're gonna save this code. And then now when you try to hit test, since you don't, you haven't created an event yet, it's gonna prompt you to create a test event. So this is the event that you send to the Lambda function. So this is what like a trigger would kind of send, but this is because we're testing on council, we have to create our own event. So we're not really using, we're just debugging this. So I mean, we're just doing this. So I just go like key tutorial, right? And then go create this event and then hit test. Okay, once you hit test, you can see it actually log the results here. And you can, show, you can see the response, the, uh, the return result is this is basically that hash, that is called body. And then some logging output here, like hello world and the event with key one tutorial, that's where we set it. See, let's go look back to the code down here. You actually see it down here also. So this is all kind of together, but that's that's it. That's how it Lambda works. You just write code and you just run it and you can actually do it all in your browser here. I think it's good for learning purposes, but in order to kind of do this like, uh, you know, as sanely, you should codify the process and all that. And that's why um, tools like Jets is helpful. So, okay. So that's how you call the code from the council. Uh, let's also call the code from the um, CLI. So using the CI to invoke basically the API. So I'll show you how to do that now. Uh, here's the reference right here, documentation. AWS Lambda uh, invoke is the command that you were looking for. And you can see you have to call invoke with a function name. And then the other important ones is pay, uh, payload. And, and, and app file so that, uh, that where you want to write the results to. So that's what we need. So we can go AWS, uh, Lambda, then we'll, we'll do list functions first so you can see the functions. Okay, so there's the functions and now we just want to go invoke, invoke, and then it was function name. It was hello, that's what we called it, uh, payload, payload. And then we're just gonna give it this JSON structure here. So key one, kind of K one, B1, and just trying to keep it short and then out file, so out.txt. Let's try that. So it invoked it and then return status code two. Let's see what's in the out file. That should be the result. See, that's the same result that we saw when we were hitting in this console here, right here. I don't know if that's IMA. In this console here is the same result. And then you can actually click on the logs here and that takes you to the CloudWatch logs. And that's where the logs are kind of saved. So you go, when you go in CloudWatch, I don't even bother clicking the event streams. I just click search log groups immediately. And then that kind of shows you all the invocations of it. And here's the kind of more, most recent one via the CLI. And that's basically in the API. So that is it. That's how you create a basic Lambda function, a hello world function with Ruby. Um, and you know, you could just do it all in council here. So hopefully, um, you know, that helps uh, for people who are new to AWS Lambda and just kind of getting familiar with interfacing and everything. It does take some time because there's a lot of, you know, there's a lot of stuff there. There's a huge list. So hopefully that was helpful. Okay, if you guys like videos like this, please give it a thumbs up and share with your friends. It encourages me to create more content like this. Uh, if you like content like this, uh, just, and you wanna watch more content like this, just subscribe. Um, and uh, that's it guys, cheers.